after each of our petit discussions, our chats together all in French, there's a deep dive into some of the French that I have been using. It will touch on various things after each of our episodes. Maybe it will be grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, anything that I feel may need a little bit of further explaining. Today, we are going to cover the French word truc and the basic principles of French liaison. Le truc, un truc, ce truc, c'est peut-être le mot le plus utile de la langue française. It may well be the most useful word in the French language. Mais le truc très français, c'est d'aller prendre un café. Ok, it may not be the most elegant or well thought out French word, but it is your get out of jail card when you may have forgotten how something is called or maybe can't find the words for expressing something. And French people do tend to use it a lot, quite naturally, in spoken French. Truc essentially means thing. So when you don't know the word for something, I've forgotten it, then you can substitute that forgotten word and hopefully people will then second guess what you mean. Je voudrais ce truc là. C'est quoi ce truc? In many instances, you could replace truc with quelque chose, something. Je voudrais te montrer un truc. Je voudrais te montrer quelque chose. I would like to show you something. But rather than being always a substitute, it has taken a little bit of a center stage in some very well used French expressions. Mais tu sais, machin truc, je me rappelle plus de son nom. You know, what's his name? When you can't remember someone's name, Son truc, c'est vraiment la voile. His passion is sailing. Le bricolage, c'est vraiment pas mon truc. DIY is really not my thing. Ça y est, j'ai le truc. There you go, I've cracked it. I've got the knack for it. Je vais te montrer un truc qui réussit à tous les coups. I'm going to show you a thing that works all the time. Le truc pour te faire des amis, c'est d'aller de l'avant. The trick to make friends is to put yourself forward. And it goes on and on. C'est un truc de fou. It's unbelievable. It's crazy stuff. Chacun son truc. Each to their own. Oh, difficult to say that. Chacun son truc. Each to their own. Tous tes trucs, il y en a marre. I'm fed up with all your funny business. And one last one. Tu tiens un truc là. Tu tiens vraiment un truc. You want to something. So as you can see, truc is really mainstream in the French language as a substitute for a word you have forgotten, but also in many super useful everyday expressions. So when I say, mais le truc très français, c'est d'aller prendre un café, it's not that I'm lazy or that I've forgotten the word. It really is a very useful and well-used word in the French language. Don't rely on it too much. Try and explore other words but it's there, you can use it. If you know a little bit about French, you probably will already have heard about the French liaison. Liaison is not something specifically French, it's used in many languages. But let's look at how it works in our language. The easiest way of trying to describe a French liaison is when the end of one word kind of sticks to the start of the next word. Liaison can be quite simple and also a little bit tricky. For today, we're keeping things quite top line and simple. I will do another video in depth about French liaison and we'll put a link here very soon. The biggest benefit of faire la liaison is that it will make your French sound pretty instantly a lot more fluent. It's a little bit magic like that. And also it can really help with pronunciation of two words one after the other. So liaison really are your friend. Try to gradually incorporate them when you speak French. The more you do it, the easier it will get. But I like to demystify liaison a little bit. Yes, they are really helpful at making you sound more French, but 
aside from some very specific cases, it's not something that you must completely and entirely adhere to. In fact, because I speak really slowly in my French video, I do not make all the liaison, and that's okay. And in spoken French, from one person to the other, there will be just different levels of adhering to liaison. Some people will use them more, and some will use them less, and that's okay. Purists will probably disagree on that, but I am a firm believer that perfection is the enemy of good. So if you miss one liaison or several, do not give yourself a hard time. It is okay. Allez, on écoute quelques exemples. Mais le truc très français, c'est d'aller prendre un café. Tu viens, on va prendre un café. C'est-à-dire aller dans un bar, un café, une brasserie. Vous êtes arrivé au café ou à la brasserie ou au tabac. Les personnes qui restent au comptoir, c'est-à-dire qui prennent leur café au bar, sont souvent des habitués ou des personnes qui sont pressées. C'est un petit café noir, plutôt fort, style espresso. Il sera servi avec un morceau de sucre, peut-être un verre d'eau et si vous avez de la chance, un petit gâteau ou un petit morceau de chocolat. Un café noisette, c'est le petit café fort dont on vient de parler avec une pointe de lait. Si vous prenez un demi ou un panaché, il peut être servi avec une petite coupelle de cacahuètes ou de petits gâteaux apéritifs. So, what are the principles behind using liaison? Faire la liaison. To start with, you may already know that many consonant letters at the end of French words are silent. I've made a video about this, which I will link up here. When the following word start with a vowel, A, E, I, O, U, or a H, muet, then that silent consonant is no longer silent. For example, let's take the subject pronoun vous, you in plural. Vous, V-O-U-S, with a silent S. Vous êtes, you are, or vous avez, you have. S is no longer silent. Another example. C'est un petit verre de bière. C'est un petit verre de bière. It is a small glass of beer. It is, is C, with a silent T. C'est un petit verre de bière. T is now sounded and no longer silent. Let's move on to principle two. How do we pronounce that liaison? Think of the liaison sound actually transferred onto the following word. So it's a little bit like this final silent letter has moved to the start of the following word. Obviously not in reality, but in the way you pronounce it. For instance, C'est le petit café noir et fort dont on vient de parler is actually sounding dont, ton, vient de parler and not dont, on vient de parler, dont on vient de parler. Vous êtes arrivé au café? Vous êtes arrivé au café. Not vous êtes arrivé au café. Principle three, some letters will sound a little bit different from how they're used in the middle of a word. For instance, as we've just heard, S becomes Z. Vous êtes arrivé, not vous êtes arrivé. X has the exact same sound. De Z, Z remains the same. Chez elle. And finally, the letter D sounds a little bit closer to a T, un grand ami. Vous êtes arrivé, you have arrived. Deux amis, two friends. Chez elle, at hers, at her home. Un grand ami, a good friend. Principle four. If you research liaison, you read about mandatory liaisons. What this really means is that in some instances, if you do not do the liaison, si vous ne faites pas la liaison, then the comprehension will be affected. In our examples, vous êtes arrivé, 
If you miss the liaison, it will really sound very clumsy. Vous êtes arrivé. Si vous avez de la chance, if you miss the liaison here, it will sound like si vous avez de la chance. Some other example with the use of on. I've done a video about the use of on instead of nous, which I link up here. On a de la chance. If you miss the liaison, it will sound like on a de la chance, which will be not only clumsy, but actually quite difficult to understand. On y va? Let's go. If you miss the liaison, it will sound like on y va. Listen to the difference. On y va? Or on y va? It really is very obvious with this little expression how much of a difference a liaison will make in the comprehension. There you go. It's probably enough of an introduction on liaison in French. I will add a link once I've done a full video on this simple but also sometimes a little bit tricky subject. In the meantime though, use your liaison as often as you can. You will make mistakes and you will forget some important liaisons and that's okay. The more you do it, the more they will become natural. Just a couple of things that I thought would be helpful to talk about following our last petite discussion. If you've heard anything that I've said in French that you don't fully understand or would love a little bit of explanations about, please uh, leave me your suggestions in the comments. In the meantime, I hope you have found this useful and I see you in the next video.